If you're just joining us, we've been having a great show. We're talking about sleep paralysis, what it is, and why as a Christian you should be concerned or even know about it. If you have questions for our guest, Elder Laron Bledsoe, he's here in the studio, and um, he's an expert really on this topic, and we've just been having a great conversation. But give us a call at 314 969 Six nine zero zero, and Elder Laron. Before we went to break, we were talking about sleep paralysis, what it is. We've talked about the different doors that allow sleep paralysis to come in. Um, it allows the spirits to come in and attack you while you're sleeping. Um, but now we want to talk about the authority that God has given us to fight against demonic activity. Um, so just tell us if if I am suffering from sleep paralysis, how do I get rid of this? How do I fight this? One of the first things that a believer must do in order to fight these attacks is begin to close any open doors where sin can get in. I'm reminded in the Word of God there was a scripture that says that uh, uh, the, it talks about besetting sins over in the book of Hebrew, lay inside every sin and the weight that so easily besets us. So as, as believers, we have to take our walk with God serious to the point to where we don't practice sin. Uh, we don't open these doors. We don't engage in pornography. We don't engage in, in, in masturbation and all the things that open doors. Uh, that's the first step. We got to close those doors. And, you know, I just want to interrupt because I know that that's the first step. But it sounds so easy to say, OK, I've been practicing pornography for many years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I've shared on this show that, you know, I used to be uh, an addict of pornography. It's sure. not something that you can just immediately stop. No. Um, but when it comes to dealing with besetting sins, um, you know, in your video, you talk about that we have to um, be active in our own deliverance. Mm -hmm. Are there any tips that you may? have to um, help someone or encourage someone uh, to end sinful practices. Amen. Uh, yes. Uh, the very first thing is confession. Confession. We cannot hide from God. I always tell people this. I say your, your mind and your life and your mind and your thoughts are, is God's television. Whatever's flowing through it, whatever you're watching, God is watching too. The first step to being delivered is confession. And one of my favorite scriptures that got me through the besetting sins in my own walk with God was the scripture that says that, uh, for we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in every way tempted as we yet without sin. Amen. And the other scripture that says, if ye confess your faults, he's faithful and just to forgive you in God's job. He's going to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So we've got to confess We've got to confess. We've got to tell God that we need deliverance. And, and we've also got to want to be delivered. Uh, and in that, in that confession, if we believe, see, I think a lot of times Christians struggle because they try to be delivered themselves only to be entangled again and again and again and again because they're trying it on their own. When you let go and let God, it's just simple as confession. And just telling him, Lord, I'm going to need your help. And I don't trust myself to be able to do this on my own. That's the first step. I mean, I think that that is so beautiful what you just said about confessing and realizing that you can't do it on your mm -hmm. own. Because when you've been in bondage and you've tried to do it yourself through flesh, it never works. Never works. But with the power of the Holy Spirit, when you confess and ask God, Lord, I need your help. Mm -hmm. He will hear you. He will hear you. He will hear you and he will deliver you Amen. when you really want to be delivered. And being a part of the house of God and the service of God and community of God, uh, you need good anointed services. You need services where the word of God is flowing, uh, where the praise and worship is anointed and powerful. Uh, because in those services, God can heal you. He can deliver you instantly through his anointing and through his power. It's the anointing that destroyed the yoke. Mm -hmm. And one of the main things the enemy will try to do is bring condemnation into a believer's life who's trapped into these besetting sins and try to keep them away from the house of God to make them feel hypocritical or make them feel like they're hypocrites because uh, they're still engaging in this and they know they're supposed to be saved and all of that. You might as well just leave the church. You might as well go back to the world. That's a lie. 
The devil is a lie. Amen. You just got to keep believing God for deliverance. Amen. Amen. And, you know, a lot of times deliverance is a process. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God does uh, immediately deliver you and we mm -hmm. say amen to that. Yeah. But other times, you know, you're going to have to walk out that process. You know, you're going to have to throw away uh, those DVDs. You're going to have to download a program um, to make sure that you're not able to look at some of those pornographic sites. Sure. You know, you're going to have to do some work as well mm -hmm. um, for your own deliverance. So what are some other ways to uh, be able to uh, break free from demonic activity taking place during sleep paralysis? Um, as believers, when we close those doors that allow the enemy a foothold, the Bible says give no space, give no room, give no opportunity to the devil, because believe you me, he's going to take it. Uh, but the Bible commands us to resist the devil and he will flee. I mean, there were times where I had to stop whatever I was doing. The temptation may come up. I had to literally cry out to God uh, to help me during that time. And, it, and I can, can say it's not going to be an easy task. Uh, so the power that we have as believers, there was a, a story in the book of Luke where there was a man who was uh, a demoniac. He was full of demons. As a matter of fact, when Jesus spoke to the demonic spirits in him, they said that our name is Legion, for we are many. Jesus cast those spirits out of the man, and they begged him to not send them out into the deep. When the research that I've done is there's supposed to be a place like the abyss uh, where, where de demonic spirits are banned into everlasting chains of darkness or in hell. See, they, they want to be around on the earth operating and, and, and fulfilling some type of purpose. Uh, and Jesus actually gave in to their request and allowed them to go into a herd of swine. But the power and authority we have, God has given us in, in the book of, uh, I believe it's Luke chapter 10. Verse 18 through 20. Verses 18 through 20. And uh, Jesus was speaking to the disciples. He said, behold, verse 19, Luke 10 and 19, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you. So. As believers, if we experience an attack like this, we've got to stand on our authority because Satan is going to play a game of chicken with us. He's going to try to make us feel inferior or that we don't have the power. Uh, when I first started rebuking these spirits, they didn't go away right away. They, they'll try to play a game with you like what you're saying and praying is not working. Sure. But we just have to stand on the authority that God has given us and be confident, not in ourselves, not in our ability, but to be confident in God's word. You know, and I think that's a really good point um, that in order to be able to fight the demonic realm, you need to know the word of God. It yes. needs to be in your mouth. It needs to be in your belly. Mm -hmm. um, and like you talked about initially when you began to rebuke those spirits, one of the things that I found about uh, different spirits that come from the enemy, they will harass you. They will, they will taunt you. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to continue to speak the word of God to yeah. them. And like you said, I like what you said about uh, taking authority and using the word of God mm -hmm. um, out of your mouth mouth. I'm curious, um, Elder Laron, um, because I know, and I want to revisit this because I asked this question earlier on in the program, but I just sure. want to make sure listeners understand that you can be saved. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost. You can be a great woman or a man of God and still suffer from sleep paralysis. The enemy will try to come back. He'll try to taunt you. Mm -hmm. What do you do? There's a certain prayer that, that, uh, that I pray. Uh, I read a book that was written by a guy on sleep paralysis and his testimony, he put a very powerful prayer in there. And this prayer has worked for me numerous times. And the prayer was to speak to that spirit and say, I command you to leave this place right now and to never return. I cast you into the abyss and to never return. A lot of times when we, when I was dealing with those attacks, I would be pleading the blood or, or you know, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Uh, uh, but but you got to get specific with these demonic presence. I've heard some people cast them into the presence of God. I cast you into the presence of God and believe in the authority that God has given the believers through his power and through his spirit. And now anyone, the Bible says to many as believe on him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. So when we are confident in our walk with God and not walking defeated, we're not walking defeated. When we're confident in our walk with God, we can stand on God's word. 
with much more authority than an individual who know that they're doing things displeasing to God, not trying to be delivered. And when these attacks come upon us, we feel helpless. And I've been there before. Uh, and, and, and that actually motivated me to get closer to God. If the enemy was still able to get a foothold in my life and here I am saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, who do I go to to talk to about this? I never heard this taught in the church, in any church. I've never heard anyone that went to a church where these things were being taught. So a lot of understanding, a lot of people don't experience, but you'd be surprised how many people do experience this on a daily basis. Amen. And, you know, I just believe that this broadcast is going to help many. And it Me doesn't too. just stop at the radio, but we'll also be posting this video on YouTube. It'll be on the website, www.inspiredoverflow.com. Sure. So even, you know, many months and even many years from now, people will be able to listen and watch this message so it can help. I want to revisit something that you talked about because I think it is really relevant for those that are dealing with sleep paralysis. Um, it, we've talked about how important it is to close the door to all mm -hmm. besetting sins. Mm -hmm. So once you know that you have closed those doors and even if you are still faced with an attack, mm -hmm. it's so important to have that word of God inside of you so you can be able to speak it. So it kind of reminds me of as a believer when I'm attacked by the enemy. Mm -hmm. If I know that I'm doing everything that God has called me to do, I know that I'm clean and I'm living holy. When the enemy comes mm -hmm. at me, I know that I can stand with authority Man. because the Lord has my back. Man. And I think that's what's so important for the listeners who may be facing these types of demonic activities, that you can rest confident and rest assured that God has your back. He's already given you the victory. So when we start talking about demonic activity or sleep paralysis, there's no need to fear mm -hmm. that you should feel encouraged and inspired to know that God is with you, that, you know, you don't have to deal with condemnation. You don't have to worry that the enemy is going to whip you up and beat you up and all of That's that right. kind of stuff. Right. But you take your rightful place. Mm hmm. You know, one of the um, scriptures that you talked about and that you referenced in your video um, was that, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against power and principalities. And I think one of the things that as a church, we don't do enough of a good enough job explaining that this really is spiritual warfare. Amen. And so that way people don't shrink or get afraid when we start talking about demonic activity. But when you know that you're in a war, you have the tools and you have the weapons to fight. Yeah, one, one scripture that stands out to me is a war in heaven, a revelation. And there was a proclamation made when the devil was cast out. It's, there was an angel that spoke that said, Rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them, for the accuser of our brethren is cast out. But the next words that came out of his mouth was, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil come down to you with great wrath, knowing that he had but a short time. So, the spiritual warfare, why the enemy wants to attack us and cause us to fall into pornography and be set in sins and those things that cause sleep paralysis. He's after your anointing. He's after your ability to be effective for the kingdom of God. That's what he's after. And he knows that if he can cause a believer to lead, live a double, double standard life, we're not going to be enthused to share the gospel. We're not going to be anointed at the time that we need to be anointed in this last day. In this last hour, the world needs to see some anointed men and women of God that are in touch with God that can cast out devils, that can lay hands on the sick and they, and they recover, that can operate in the power and the glory of God. So what he's after, he's after the anointing. If he destroys the anointing or if he wars against your anointing, your ability, the anointing is your ability to be effective for God. It's his spirit working in you. And the devil knows that God needs a clean vessel. He needs a clean vessel. And we're more apt to hear from God when we speak to people. We can operate in the prophetic anointing other than just saying, hey, what church you go to? But God will allow us to see into that person's life. But when we indulge in sin and besetting sins like pornography and masturbation, it hinders us. And it hinders God from using us in the magnitude that he desired. So the enemy is after the anointing. But we can stand bold in the fact that this was never given to us to do anyway. <laughs> it was all through the power of God. Amen. And like you said, depending on his word. Amen. Amen. So the Lord is with you, Inspired Overflow listeners, and there is nothing that you encounter that is too heavy or too large um, for the Lord to deal with and address. This sure. show is 
been about really just encouraging you and making sure that you were educated and aware that if you are dealing with sleep paralysis, if you feel like you are being attacked by the enemy, that the Lord is with you. There are tools, amen, mm -hmm. um, for you to be able to fight against the enemy in the spiritual realm. What I want to do right now, um, Elder Laron, before we close this sure. broadcast is I would like for um, to ask you to just say a prayer to cover those who may be dealing with sleep paralysis, those that are saved and even those that are unsaved. Sure. Let me just say this before I pray uh, for the unsaved. I don't have a permanent solution. Uh, the, the, God will hear your prayers. You know, a lot of time they, they taught that, you know, if you're not saved, God doesn't hear your prayer. That's not true. I found that to not to be true in the word of God. Uh, but God does hear your prayers and he will stop some of these attacks if you're not saved. But there's no permanent solution. What you must do is repent and, and surrender your life to God. Amen. Come on in, Come get, on get in. in the ark of safety. Come on in under the blood and get the full authority. Uh, and for believers, we've already talked about that. So, yeah, I'm going to pray at this time. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you glory in all things. We pray for those that are listening, God, that are being abused and attacked by these spirits. Lord, that you would touch them even now as we pray. Satan, the Lord God, rebuke you. The blood of Jesus stand against you. We command you to take your hands off God's anointed. For they don't belong to you. They belong to God. God, empower them and let them see the authority that you've given unto us in your name and in your blood. Touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, God. Those that are living in fear. For you said that you've not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And you said that you gave us power to tread over all the power of the enemy, all the serpents and scorpions in your name. So, Lord, I pray for those that are experiencing these attacks, that you would touch them right now, God, and deliver them, set them free. Open their eyes to see those activities that are causing demonic invitation. Give us power to resist the devil and he will flee. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray right now. Amen. 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 Well, Elder Laron, I thank you so much for your candor, your love of the Lord, and your willingness to share your testimony and thank also you. to come here and bless us on Inspired Overflow Radio Show. Thank you for this opportunity. How can individuals get in contact with you? Uh, they can reach out to me on Facebook at Elder Laron Bledsoe. Uh, I'm also on Twitter at LB Chosen. Or they can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Eat Truth, E-A-T, Truth. Amen. And Inspired Overflow listeners, we want to support this great man of God. He's written a book called The Selling of the Soul, My True Encounter, Lyrics That Kill. Um, you can look this book up at Amazon.com under Leron Bledsoe. We want to support him. Amen. And his book writing uh, and all of that. And really just the knowledge um, that God has given him to bless the body of Christ. Inspired Overflow listeners, I pray that this broadcast has blessed you. I pray that it has opened up your eyes even more. Amen. To, to what is taking place. I pray that you've been illuminated. Amen. Amen. In the spiritual and also in the natural. Uh, know that we love you here at Inspired Overflow. It's our desire to continue to promote the banner and the kingdom of Jesus Christ. We want to encourage you to, to tune in every Wednesday at 3 p.m. here at the same place and same time. Be sure to support our sponsors. We want to give a special shout out to Hazina Boutique, Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church in their summer program. Also to Tracy Berry McGee with Sister Keeper Empowerment Center. As always, uh, Inspired Overflow, we love you, but know that the Lord loves you more. Until next week, we will see you then. Until then, take care and be blessed.